Hello everyone, Phil here. Welcome to another video. I've been dying to do this one and I had a lot of people ask me to do one. Um, I've done one in the past but I wasn't really happy with the quality so I wanted to do another one. This one is about the GoTech floppy emulator simulator. It's got a three digits at the front. There goes a USB, two buttons. GoTech is the company and that's really it. A floppy port at the back. It's got a bunch of jumpers and there's the floppy power connector really cheap and very very they work really really well i've been using them these since the beginning of 2013 um they're selling for around 25 australian dollars including postage i've got a total of four now i've got one in my main um, capture in my main capture desktop which is in my computer lab but also in my uh, main retro time machine which is a super socket 7 machine and then i've got two more to work on various uh test benches so this is all about replacing these the good old floppy drives now there's nothing wrong with that but i find them very unreliable now especially the new floppy drives if you've got some of the older ones they do work but look you might have to maintain them and clean the heads and all sorts of things and floppies really hard to buy these days and they lose data for example I've got my DOS installation disks and twice I had to write them again because some of the disks just keep failing so not very reliable and I wouldn't recommend this if I if I didn't believe in it I've been using this solution since 2013 and haven't had a single glitch so it's 100% totally reliable now trick one tip with the floppies you've got to watch for the polarity so i'm just going to set up my camera and hopefully it zooms in properly you can see um here it says pin 2 on the, on the other side it says pin 34 pin 1 and pin 2 that's the red cable on the floppy header so here we have a, a floppy cable this one has a twisted part that goes with the floppy drive and the red bit goes here so red goes with pin one and the twisted part goes with the floppy drive whereas see there's no twist on here this goes into the motherboard and same with the motherboard look for pin one or two for the red marked cable now Another tip I've got for you is using one of these. Uh, that's how I keep my uh, floppy USBs. I have a list that goes from one to 49 on one side and on the other side all the way up to 99. And basically as I go along, I fill, out, I fill it out with a pen, fairly old school, but it's a system that works. This is my uh, second floppy I've got a uh, another one but the handwriting is not as neat so I wanted to show you this one and that's really it now going forward I'll show you what you have to do on the desktop um, it comes with some software but the software is actually garbage and there's a better software to install which will allow you to format and also read and write uh, onto the USB and then I'll hook up one of these flop floppy emulators on a Pentium 3 system and I'm going to give you a real life demonstration of the this really amazing product okay so let's have a look at the usb floppy emulator software that we're going to install on our main desktop and it allows us to access the floppy images uh, just through the normal usb port but also to prepare and format the usb stick in the first place now i got my floppy emulators uh, i think two years ago, uh, quite a while ago, and the software came with was basically garbage. It wasn't English and um, it crashed all the time and uh, it didn't really work at all. So the software I recommend is from the company IPCAS and you go to this uh, download link. I'll put it in the description and also on my website and download the version 1.40i and I'm just gonna put that in my download folder. Now, this program will allow us to set up our USB to basically uh, format it and put 100 uh, floppy images on it, but it'll also allow us to write uh, information onto the individual disks, because by default, you can only access the first disk. Okay, 
So, let's unpack that zipped file. And let's install it. Now, I recommend you change the default installation location because it puts it into the x86 folder, which means you have constantly have to run it as an administrator. So I'm gonna change that and I'm just gonna put it into C USB floppy emulator version two. All the disk backups and where you save your files, they will all be under this uh, directory. Okay, and, uh, we can leave everything else standard. That's good to go and let's have a look. I've done this before, so I've actually got a shortcut here and we open that and here's our software. I've also formatted the USB stick before, so I'm just going to do it again and show you how it works. So here you can see all the USB sticks in your system. I only have one and I recommend you be careful that you don't overwrite the wrong one. But if you click on it, or hover the mouse on it, it actually tells you uh, what stick it is. So it's a four gigabyte SanDisk Cruiser. Um, Lots of ways to use this program. You can right click on things and you get a context uh, menu or you can use the menus at the top. I'm going to right click, format, leave everything by default, 100 images. I'm going to deselect quick format just because I can and everything else we leave as default. If you want to make all the disks bootable, you can do that as well, but that's not necessary. Okay, here we are, that's all been formatted. And if this is not here, it might be because it's on the right side. I had that issue when I first uh, installed it. Okay, now a couple of things you can do. You can right click or double click to open one of the floppies. And what it does, it actually goes to the folder, letter F for your drive letter, and then floppy 000 for the first floppy. And we can put some information in here. So I've prepared um, a folder. So let's say we want to put 3D Bench on. I'm just going to turn off the preview pane. On. Oh, that one's up. So I've got 3D Bench on my first floppy. I close it. But the problem is it's gone. So we're missing a step and that step is you have to right click and actually save. Now we have to do it again because I closed it. So we're putting 3D bench into copy 000, close it and then right click save. And you can see that now the used capacity is 8% and if we now open our floppy we can see that the file is here. Now we can also do um, bulk jobs. So let me just delete that file and we right click on save again. So whenever we hit save, it updates what's on the hard drive with what's on the USB. So let's say I wanna do four in one hit. I can just right click on all of them and go bulk open and it creates all these folders for me. So I'm gonna put 3D bench in the first one, I'm gonna put 3D Bench 2. In the second one, I'm gonna put PC Player Benchmark into the third one, and I'm gonna put Speedsys in the fourth floppy. Then I close it, and I right click on the four floppies and go bulk save. And you can see how the percentages all updated and they are written onto the USB now so if I go to my if I put that into my uh, GoTech floppy emulator on the PC and I dial in 003 I'll have a um, PC player bench okay there's more we can do we can use image files so I own the um, Microsoft MS-DOS 6.22 version from what is it called? TechNet. Yeah, I had a TechNet subscription and I got MS-DOS uh, through that and they give you image files. So what you can do is you can actually write images. So that's the next blank one. I go right, right click, write image file. And I'm just going to point it to this directory. Does it let me do that? 
doesn't really kind of do it down here. Yes. And click on the first image. And there you go. That's the first one. Let's do the second one. And let's do the third one. So these are ready to go. I've got MS-DOS 6.22 installation disks on uh, floppy 3, 4 and sorry, 4, 5 and 6. Okay, let's say I want to make a backup or an image from my disk 003, which has PC Player Bench on it. I just right click and go export image file. And I'm going to call that PC Player Bench. Image, yeah. So now I can send that image to someone else, for example, um, on the on, on a forum or whatever. Okay, and there's one more thing to that whole program, and that's doing a backup, especially if you've done 50 images or so. You don't want to stuff up your USB, you can just right click and go backup disk, and it backs up backups, it, <laughs> it backs up all the 100 images. So there you have it, great software if you get the software from that website. Um, I don't know if the software has gotten any better, the one that shipped with the cheap GoTech drives from e eBay. Do let me know if, if they've improved the situation, but the software that I got was really, really average. Okay guys, so here we are, I've got a little test bench up, a Pen M3 with a, my GoTech floppy emulator, and this is the USB stick. Uh, we prepared just in the previous video. It's set to the first position and the two buttons here. The one on the uh, the rightmost button, you can change the first digit and then it starts back at zero and the second button obviously changes the, can you hold it down? No, this one. So we're gonna start with the first floppy. I've set the bias that so that it boots from the uh, floppy disk. So let's do a reboot. So we should get an error because um, there is nothing that boots on the first floppy. So this is just basically showing you that it's all uh, working the way it's supposed to. So I think we put 3D bench uh, on the first floppy. Yes, if I remember, we can see that the floppy light um, went on. It's doing the floppy seeking. Okay, so that doesn't work. So let's go to the, I think the fourth floppy was the MS-DOS 6.22. So let's use that. And that seems to load fine. So we're not gonna install MS-DOS, um, but we're just gonna use it as a boot disk. Um, so you can change the floppies while the system is running and that's really very convenient because you've got access to 100 configurations and you can ch change them on the fly. So it's not a problem if you've got like Sandblaster installation disks or something that uses three or four disks, not a problem, you just switch through the installation. So let's get out of this and let's switch back. I always wait till the light goes off. Let's go back to the first one and let's do a directory and we should get our 3D bench. I'll run the other one, 3D Bench 2 on the second disk because that's, this computer is quite fast. So we do another directory and this is the second floppy. Let's see what, what score the Pending 3 is going to achieve. Should be fairly quick. There you go, 396. Let's press escape. And we can see the floppy light is turning on again. And what do we have on, on the third one? Can't remember. Was it a piece of player bench? Yes, it is. And on the third one, the fourth one, we had something else. Ah, piece of player bench as well. Hang on. Oh, I must have copied the same thing twice. Oh well. And on number four, We've got MS-DOS, that's the first, the first installation disk of MS-DOS 6.22 and then that should be the next one. You can tell at the label at the top where it says disk 1 and then it should say disk 2 and the next one is disk 3. And that's really it. 
Uh, there's not much more to it. You can now pull out the USB. It will actually remember what number it's on. You can see there's a, a little dot appeared here. And as soon as you put the USB um, back in the system, the dot will disappear and it's ready to go. Whenever you power the machine down, it goes back to zero, zero, zero. Um, if you do a reboot, it stays. So um, it doesn't go back to zero, zero, zero if you do a reboot, only if you power down the machine. And that's that's really it in terms of uh, a practical, practical demonstrations and how this device works. And that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. A little bit longer than I uh, in, in planned, but look, uh, I really wanted to uh, cover all the bases and hopefully you got a good idea of what you can do with this product. Um, bottom line is, look, it, it, it works flawlessly. I haven't had a single issue. So I highly recommend it to everyone. It's so cheap and it's really something um, every retro PC uh, guy should have in the toolbox. Uh, can't recommend it any higher. As always, hit the like button, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so. Um, any questions about this product or anything else, uh, leave a comment down below. Also on my website, philscomputerlab.com, if you go to storage, uh, to the storage section, you'll find a page dedicated to the USB floppy emulator. And on there, you'll find uh, links for downloading the software. And also you can um, print that spreadsheet, not that, not the spreadsheet, the table I use to uh, label uh, the floppy numbers, the one I showed in the plastic sleeve in the beginning of the video.